Tonight on DC News Now at 9, Virginia businesses targeted by a pepper spraying robber. The search for the person behind the crime and the brand new video just in. Plus, cold case break. An arrest made seven years after the killing of a DC police officer. Coming up, we dig into the murder suspect. Then chaos caught on camera. Thieves ransacking a CVS store in Navy Yard. This is ridiculous. And this is not what, the first, what, second one, third one? Just ahead, neighbors and DC's attorney general sound off. Looking forward to a better day as we go into your Thursday highs. They're near 80. I have your forecast. It's coming up. You're watching the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for DC News Now at 9 o'clock. I'm Chris Flanagan. And tonight, police are searching for a suspect they say robbed three Fairfax County stores and in the process, pepper sprayed employees. Our Northern Virginia reporter, Max Marcilla, is in the Woodlaw neighborhood. The latest information and new video. An employee at one of the stores targeted says they just want this person caught, saying the pepper spray attack was completely unnecessary. Now police are turning to the public, asking for help as they work to both identify and arrest this suspect, whose actions were all captured on surveillance camera video shared with DC News Now. Around 11 o'clock last Thursday night, this person walked into a Shell gas station convenience store on Richmond Highway. You can see here they opened the cash register, taking more than $400, and a few seconds later, they pepper sprayed the employee. Today at the shop, an employee who declined to go on camera said the person police are looking for has been around here in the past. Not only were they captured on these surveillance cameras at the Shell, but Fairfax County police believe they also committed the same crime at two other shops. That includes on Saturday night here at Velvet's Tobacco and more just a few doors down from the Shell and early Wednesday morning at this Rose Hill 7-Eleven, each store equipped with security cameras. These stores often can be vulnerable. I mean, they're open late at night, a lot of times by themselves. Take one more close look at the suspect. Police say at each of the three shops, an employee was pepper sprayed. We have a lot of officers out there deployed to uh, arrest them and make sure that we can stop this as quickly as possible. And they want an arrest so these stores can go back to business as usual without fear of another robbery and another attack. In Fairfax County, Max Marcilla, DC News Now. And developing now at 9 o'clock, a break in a seven-year-old cold case. Today, the Baltimore City State's Attorney's Office announcing an arrest in the murder of an off-duty D.C. police officer. It happened back in 2017. Officials say a tip made early last year led to that arrest. D.C. News Now's Mariel Carbone following the story for us tonight. She joins us from police headquarters. And Mariel, it's certainly a big day for both D.C. and Baltimore police. Yeah, Chris, it is DC Police Chief Pamela Smith says the death of Sergeant Tony Mason Jr. has really been a mystery all these years, one that both agencies have been working to solve. So tonight she is hoping this announcement can help bring some closure to his family, both police and other. Nearly seven years with no answers today that changed. It was because of a brave person who called in a tip that we can all stand here before you today. DC Police Sergeant Tony Mason Jr. was shot to death in November of 2017. He was off duty in Baltimore and on a date when it happened. For far too long, the details surrounding Sergeant Mason's tragic death have remained a painful mystery. In 2018, the FBI announced a $60,000 reward in the case. In early 2023, a break when someone called in a tip. The person claiming Dion Thompson, who was just 18 at the time of the murder, confessed to killing Mason. Baltimore's cold case unit investigated, eventually charging Thompson with first degree murder. The charge against Mr. Thompson are a result of painstaking interagency investigation. According to a statement of charges, Thompson saw Mason's car parked on Elgin Avenue that night and became paranoid, believing its occupants were either there to rob him or retaliate against him. He allegedly contacted two friends and together they pulled up next to Mason's car. That's when someone opened fire. 16 shell casings were recovered. Mason was hit and killed. His date hit and injured. Document and say Thompson is a member of the gang, the slickest one, whose turf is on Elgin Avenue. 
And Thompson is currently being held at a jail in New Jersey on drug charges. Uh, Chris, police do believe other people were involved, so they're asking anyone with additional information to contact Baltimore City Police. Reporting live from police headquarters here in D.C. tonight, I'm Marielle Carbone, D.C. News Now. Such a big break in that case, Marielle. Thanks. Meanwhile, all new at nine, D.C. police have arrested a man for stabbing inside a McDonald's. It happened at the downtown D.C. restaurant on New York Avenue last night. So according to the police report, customers were ordering food when the man flashed a knife and threatened to kill everyone. He then stabbed the customer in the neck when that customer tried to intervene. A suspect, Reginald Pickett, is now in custody. The victim is being treated at the hospital. All right, let's get a first check on the forecast with Chief Meteorologist Janessa Webb. And Janessa, tomorrow, Thursday, looking pretty decent with some sunshine. Yeah, tomorrow's a pretty fair day across the DMV. It's going to be uneventful. Uh, really, you have daytime highs that are back into the middle to upper 70s. So a pretty gorgeous day uh, compared to what's going to happen on Friday. So it's uh, time to take this in. I know today wasn't the best day across the region, and it's due to this storm system. A light show that is happening out towards Ohio right Right now check on your family and friends they are just getting over a uh, tornado outbreak across uh, Toledo parts of greater Cleveland and look how that squall line it's bowing out making its way into the Pittsburgh area where they're under that tornado watch the big question does that hold together making its way into the DMV that's going to be a no uh, really the West Virginia area will break this system apart Kaiser I'm watching you very closely likely a uh, potential of a few rumbles of thunder but look how that cutoff starts to happen and out towards that way where no tornado watch is currently in place. We'll watch it very uh, carefully, but any moisture that comes into the DMV, it will be on the light to isolated side, uh, not making its way into our nation's capital. Temperatures right now at the 9 o'clock hour, upper 60s, a few 70s for Northern Virginia. Hey, Lexington Park, 71. Uh, for most of the region today, we were sitting into the lower 70s compared to tomorrow afternoon where all of us, we rise back up to the upper 70s to lower 80s and folks we're going to warm up pretty quickly here pretty gorgeous day for your Thursday so we'll fast forward ahead let's talk about your Friday where we have more rain chances Chris I have that full forecast it's coming up all right Janessa we'll see you then thanks well developing now at nine wild video today of thieves look at here ransacking a CVS in Navy Yard it happened last night at the store on New Jersey Avenue our Daniel Hamburg spoke with the man who captured the video who says well he's fed up he tells me he is frustrated. He's seen theft here at the CVS before, but he says the size of the group last night made him take out his phone and start recording. In this video shot by Dan Lang, you can see someone on an electric scooter, one of at least six teenagers or young men, running through CVS and ransacking the store. It was just total, complete and utter chaos, and people were grabbing stuff out of the freezers, out of the drink compartments, off the shelves, and running out and knocking stuff off the shelves just to, just to do it. Customers are fed up. This is ridiculous. And this is not what? The first, what? Second one? Third one? They've been hitting them like white on rice. In the video, two Metro Transit police officers are seen standing around. We're told they were there to assist D.C. police. It's crazy just to look at, just to see that they didn't do much there and that they just went in with no issue to do that. This theft comes even after the Secure D.C. bill passed last month, creating a new directing organized retail theft offense. I don't know how much that maybe hasn't been disseminated to the, these people. Maybe the, the information hasn't gotten to them that they're trying to do something in the city. Uh, or maybe the bill isn't enough. Lang says he has no confidence in Mayor Bowser to fix this. The general tenor of the neighborhood is a big roll of the eyes and when's my lease up tends to be uh, what's going on in this neighborhood and it's a shame. CVS says they are working with DC police in this investigation and they say that the safety of their colleagues, customers and patients are their top priority and they also say they are ensuring all of the products that they need remain on the shelves. In Navy Yard, Daniel Hamburg, DC News Now. Well, DC Attorney General Brian Schwab responding tonight, calling this behavior unacceptable and disturbing. He says swift and certain consequences are critical in deterring crime. He says his office will continue to hold young people accountable through the justice system. Well, another robbery suspect DC police want you to be on the lookout for tonight. This man accused of stealing cash registers and other items from at least two convenience stores in Northeast. Police say in both cases, he sprayed a fire extinguisher and then sprayed people inside. 
Well, happening now, after a violent few weeks in Prince George's County, there's a new effort to crack down on ghost guns. A newly proposed bill would add untraceable guns to the county's list of banned weapons. The bill would make it illegal to give a ghost gun or parts of a ghost gun to a minor. Prince George's County leaders say there's been an uptick in the untraceable weapons across the county and country. I'm constantly having to work with families, and that's why a robust legislation around ghost guns, around gun violence, around youth resources is a priority for myself um, because we have to do something to start seeing a difference in our community. A county council also introduced legislation to expand their curfew for minors. It's an effort to curb a rise in youth violence. Well, D.C. police continue to find more card skimmers at stores all across the district. The latest one was found at a 7-Eleven on a Connecticut Avenue in Northwest. D.C. News Now's Tosin Fakile joining us tonight in the newsroom. And Tosin, we're talking six stores found with this issue all within about a month or so in D.C. Chris, that's right. Just last week, I was telling you about card skimmers at different stores. But what makes this incident different is, according to this police report, a card skimmer was found on an ATM inside this convenience store. And shoppers there tell us they're going to do business elsewhere for a while. I'm probably like never going to use my chip again. Jack McKenna reacts to the recent trend of card skimmers found at several stores in D.C., including this 7-Eleven he frequents. Police say an ATM tech found the card skimmer on an ATM machine at this store at around 7 p.m. Tuesday. The police report states the ATM tech was there to fix a card reader error when they noticed a strange white light on the reader, a black stripe, and an SD chip reader that did not belong to the machine. That's when they realized it was a card skimmer. I don't know how to tell a skimmer from a not skimmer, so I feel like it's just kind of a game of chance when you go to buy stuff, which isn't the best, but um, I guess I just gotta be vigilant about checking like my credit history and stuff like that to make sure uh, my information isn't compromised. This store was the latest target. Card skimmers found at two Harris Teeters, two Safeways, and a Wawa between the end of March and last week. Assuming that tapping really is a safe way to go. Um, other than that, I'm not sure if I'll shop at the 7-Eleven again for a while. Police are looking for these suspects they believe placed the skimmers at stores across the district. Now, the police report says the card skimmer and the device, the ATM device that was attached to were removed from that store. And of course, police want you to be safe. They're telling you to always make sure that you check the card reader when you're using it. Make sure it's not able to move. Look inside the card reader before you insert your card. Call 911 immediately if you feel like you see a card skimmer. And of course, they're telling you to contact your bank if you feel like you've been a victim of a card skimmer. Chris, back to you. All right, good information there. Tosa Kiele and live in our newsroom tonight. All right, staying in the district, the Rainbow History Project reenacted the first gay rights picket today. The original rally and today's rally took place at Lafayette Square 59 years ago to the date. Volunteers carried replicas of the original protest signs, which pushed for gay rights. One volunteer telling us this is just the beginning. Next year is World Pride. In 2025, D.C. will be hosting international pride festivities, and we're going to have about an extra 2 million people here to participate in that. And for that, which will be the 60th anniversary of the picket, we're doing a massive exhibit on the history of pride in Washington, D.C. Well, the White House picket was the first public demonstrations for gay rights here in the United States. Well,